robot makers, do you want to make your own theremin using a Raspberry Pi Zero and a couple of rangefinders? Then keep watching. So for this project I've designed and 3D printed a little case and the Raspberry Pi will sit inside the case. So I just need to make some changes to the case so I can get USB and power inside. So as you can see we've got two rangefinders, one on the top and one at a 45 degree angle. So I wired up these rangefinders using a voltage divider as well. So that's just 2K resistor going to ground and a 1K resistor going from the 2K resistor to the echo pin on each of them. And that's just to protect the Raspberry Pi Zero from five volts because it's actually 3.3 volts on these headers. So you can pretty much pick any two pairs of pins on here to be the echo on the trigger for each of the rangefinders. And we've got the five volts going from each of the rangefinders to the five volts on the Raspberry Pi. So the two rangefinders, one of them is for volume, which is this top one. So depending on the, the height of our hand against the sensor, we'll define what the volume should be. And we have another rangefinder there, which is for the pitch. So depending on how far away our hand is from that one, we'll define whether the notes are high or low. So I created two programs using Python, one that runs on the Raspberry Pi Zero and one that runs on another computer, which has MIDI software attached. And in this case, I've got an Apple Mac. So over on the Raspberry Pi, so I've already downloaded the code from GitHub, but let's have a quick look how we do that. So we open up a new term Terminal and we do git clone https github.com forward slash kevin mcalear forward slash therapy and that will clone the therapy file into a new folder so if we look there we've got a bunch of files we've got some midi players basic midi receiver midi sender readme requirements.txt and therapy.py therapy.py is the main file that we're going to be running but before we do that we just need to set up our virtual environment so to do that we do python 3 m v e n v v e n v and that will create a new virtual environment fresh for our for our installation okay that that's now complete so to activate that we type source and then we type in the path vmv bin for binary and then there's an activate script. So you can see there in brackets, we've got the VEMV, we're in the virtual environment. We type Python version, we can see we're in 3.9.2. So if I now run Therapy, so the error message that we've just got there is because we haven't installed any of the dependencies. So to do that, we type pip install dash r for requirements, and then we pass it the requirements.txt file, which we have in our source code. So pip will go ahead and it will install all the dependencies that we need to get this software working. Okay, so all the dependencies have installed, let's give it another go. So the no root to host means that we need to launch the receiver file on our other computer on the Mac. So over here on the Mac, I'm going to run the receiver file. So Python MIDI receiver, I'm gonna hit return on that. And that says Therapy MIDI receiver server started. So back over on our Raspberry Pi, so I've launched the file and we can now see that it's sending some notes. So I jump over here and I put my hand in front of this sensor. We can start to see that that data is going to change. I put my hand over here. You can see the velocity is changing between 127, which is the highest. And we can get it right down to about two or three if we get it really close to the sensor. And similarly with the other sensor, we can move our hand up to about 50 centimeters away and we get a, an octave or two on there. Now I've not got the GarageBand running at the moment. Once I launch GarageBand, we'll actually hear the sounds. So let's go ahead and launch GarageBand. So I've now got GarageBand launched and I can already hear that some sounds are coming through. If I put my hand in front of this, we can see, let's get that little keyboard on screen. So we should see it go from C3 up to C4, depending on where my hand is. So let me show you how I configured the audio on the Mac. So on here, there is an IAC driver and we just need to click on the devices online to activate that. And the name of this device is the thing that we need to type into the receiver script to set up the local environment. So let's have a look at the receiver script to see what's going on there. So over here, I'm now in uh, Visual Studio Code on the Mac. We can see we've got a couple of things that we import. We've imported Mido, which you can see there is the MIDI objects for Python. It me means that we can use Python with MIDI very, very simply. We can import from Mido message. We can import sockets and port server, and that will enable us to 
to host the server on the Mac, which the Raspberry Pi can connect to and send its MIDI data, which it's interpreted using the therapy.python file. So we've got a host there, that's the IP of the Mac that I'm using. We've just created a port 8080. And then here's that IAC driver, IAC driver bus one, which is the name of the bus that we're using. And we then open a port to connect this Python library to this Max MIDI interface. We then use the port server, we pass it the port on the host, we set it up as server, and then we can then say Therapy MIDI receiver server started, which is the message we saw before. And then we have a while true loop, and we just check through to see are there any messages. So we set up a variable called client that accepts messages from the sender, the client, and we're going to check through each of the messages and then just send them out to the port, to the MIDI port on this Mac. And that's how we connect together the Raspberry Pi and our Mac with MIDI. So let's have a look at the Therapy file for a second. So I'm back over in the Raspberry Pi and I'm just using Thorny to look at the code and we can see there we import GPIO0 which is one of the libraries that we've imported using that requirements file and we've got an input devices we have input distance sensor. So distance sensor brings in all the library routines to get these range finders working very simply. We can simply just check the distance of our variables. We import Mido again, we import Mido messages, we import the sockets to connect to our server, we import time and sleep so that we can sleep the scripts. We import, I did originally use this Pygame MIDI file, we can actually get rid of that now, that isn't actually used in the code. And we import GPIO0 and then the distance sensor. Here's the host name of the Mac that it's going to connect to. There's the port that it's going to connect to on the Mac. And then I set up a minimum and maximum distance. So this is the range. This is the range of values between our minimum and our maximum. So I've got this currently at 15 centimeters to 50 centimeters. I've then set up two variables which are going to handle the range finders. So we've got volume and we have pitch. And they're connected to pins 24, 25, 22, and 23 respectively. Uh, there's then a map function. I use this map function to be able to map the range of musical notes that we're going to pass to the range of distances and that's part of the magic that makes this work. There are a couple of other functions in here. So we have distance to note. We pass in the distance, which we've just got from the range finder class. We pass in a minimum and maximum values just to check if there's anything outside of that, we can discard it. So we say if the distance is in the range, minimum and maximum plus one, then we want to do something. So we say the, the distance note equals, we type it as an integer. It might come out as a floating point number. So we want to make sure it's an integer, just a whole number. So we use the int wrapped around the map command. The map command is going to pass in the distance that we've just passed into the function. It's going to pass in the minimum and maximum and then what the range of notes that we want to work with. So this is 60 in MIDI and 72 in MIDI. 60 is middle C, 72 is C5, which is an octave higher. And then we return the note. If the distance isn't in that range, we simply return none. And we have a similar one, which is for the velocity. So that's for the, the volume of the note. It's called velocity. It's how hard you hit the key. So a similar, we just pass in a distance that we read in for our range finder, a minimum and maximum value for that as well and we have the same kind of code if the distance is in the range minimum maximum plus one then the velocity equals we map the distance we could actually use the same piece of code because this is actually identical the only thing that's different is the range of values so on here the velocity is between 0 and 127 so 0 is silent 127 is full volume further down we then connect to our server using this output variable so that's going to be a connect class which comes from the Mido port server and connect classes above we then print out standard Starting the therapy sender, we set up some variables for last notes, last volume, the current note, the last frequency, and then we have a while true loop which just goes around forever. So we say the distance equals the pitch dot distance that reads in the distance from our pitch sensor. We then say vol equals a volume dot distance, which is our distance from our volume sensor, and then we just convert them to integers. Again, we could have done that in a single command. I just decided to split them out just to make this a bit simpler. The values that we get in distances are very small. They're in millimeters. We want them to be centimeters. So we just times it by 100 to get the centimeter value. We then say the frequency equals distance to note, which is the function we've just created above. We pass in that distance that we've just read in and we pass in the minimum and maximum distances. And then we do the same with the velocity. We do distance to velocity, which is the other function that we've just looked at. The frequency is none. If it's outside of those range of valid values, it will then just say the last note, turn that off. Otherwise, it's as if we're holding down each of the keys all the time and it just gets louder and louder. We then have output.send, which will send that message that we've just created to the MIDI device over the network. I print that out just so I can see what's going on on the 
screen and then we see the last frequency equals frequency so that's just a way of detecting have we already sent this message and it just prevents lots of other messages being sent unnecessarily and then we just say the current note is zero because the frequency was nothing we haven't got a note the frequency is none and the last frequency is not the same as the current frequency then we then send the note off again but it's the current note this time and then we do output.send send the message print the message out to the screen and then similarly the last frequency becomes equal to the frequency if the frequency is not none as in we have a valid note that's been passed through and the velocity is not none we can just set the velocity to 127 if we get a non value and that means you can just use one of the sensors rather than having to use both of them at the same time the note equals the frequency which just means we've passed through a valid note if the note's not the same as the last note so the note has changed then we say message note off and then the last note and that will turn off the previous note that was pressed and then we can send that through to our MIDI device I then just put in a sleep command just to slow down some of these messages we can use that when we're debugging it to help sometimes it can be overloaded we can send too many messages at once and it kind of jitters and gets a bit janky so that's a way of dialing back how many messages are sent and then we send the note on message the note is the note and the velocity is the velocity and then we send that to the output so that's the main piece of code that will make our rangefinder grab the notes from whichever distance we're providing or whatever volume we're providing by the velocity and then send that across the network to our garage band or whatever you're using to receive that and finally we've got there if the velocity is not the same as the last volume then we can just change the value of that so we can just send through a message that doesn't change the note but it does change the velocity of the, the current note and again that output send message sends that to the current MIDI device and then we just update those variables we've processed everything through we then say the last note now equals the current note the last volume equals the current velocity and then the last frequency equals the current frequency and again we have that sleep value just to dial back some of the messages that's all been wrapped in a try accept block so at the very top of this code we can see we've got a try that's just a way of detecting whether there's a keyboard interrupt if there is a keyboard interrupt if I press ctrl and c then we can just close the output and then break which stops the program so what do you think of this uh, is this a project that you're going to try yourself. I found loading MIDI and the MIDI library Mido quite a intuitive thing to do so I'll be definitely looking at that in future projects maybe using that with some robots maybe using it with some automation and it just shows you that you can use these range finders for things that they weren't necessarily intended for so yes we're detecting range but we're not detecting objects in front of us so much as we're using it as a musical instrument to detect a range of notes that can be played so thanks for watching and I shall see you next time bye for now